All right, so more information that you can get before graphing is actually finding out if your function will cross the x-axis. There's actually three scenarios. It'll either cross it twice, it'll cross it once, or it'll cross it none at all. There is something in the quadratic formula that lets us know this. Uh, that's why it's called the discriminant. Remember, our quadratic formula looks like this. Negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Remember, earlier we used this to find the x-coordinate for a vertex. That left us with this. This right here is very important. This is actually where we get our discriminant from. In here, if b squared minus 4ac is greater than 0, Okay. If you work this out and you got it to be greater than zero, then your function will cross the x-axis twice. So twice. That lets you know that you're going to get two answers. If this is equal to zero, you're only going to get one answer. That means that uh, your vertex is actually going to be touching the x-axis. That's the only way that it can touch it one time. And the last scenario for AC, if this is less than zero, that means that, and here notice you're going to get a negative. That means the square root of a negative number, you don't work with that. So that lets you know that your quadratic function doesn't cross the x-axis at all. Now, this is helpful for graphing. In that last problem I gave you, uh, you saw how horrible my drawing was. I could have made it better by finding where my function crosses the x-axis. This gives you two more points to work with. You would have your vertex, right? You would have your y-intercept, and you could also get where it crosses the y-axis. All right, using the problem we did earlier, let's go ahead and find out how many times it crosses the x-axis and where. Using our discriminant, we're going to go ahead and substitute that in. We know that our a is 1, our b is 2, and our c is negative 8. Uh, this lets us know if we substitute that b squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 8. So we get 4 plus 32, uh, we get 36. So notice that it's a positive number, it's greater than 0. So let's just know that there's going to be two answers. This crosses the x-axis twice. If you want to know exactly where, then all you have to do is finish using the quadratic formula. So negative b plus or minus the square root of, now notice that in here, that was our discriminant. And we actually worked it out already. We already know it's 36, so I'm just gonna put in a 36 in here. Sorry. We know b, b is two. So negative two oh, over two times a, and our a is one. So uh, here we can go ahead and do our split. We can say negative two. We say negative two plus, and this is six over 2, and this is negative 2 minus 6 over 2. So here I get 4 over 2, and that's 2. And here I get negative 8 over 2, and that's 4. So these are the spots where it crosses the x-axis. So this is oops, sorry, negative 4. So this is 2 zero and this is negative four zero okay those are the two spots where it crosses the x-axis and it it'll help you go ahead and graph things more exact especially if they're far your vertex is far away from the x-axis uh, this will make it more exact all right here's a very classic problem here there's a farmer who has two thousand let's say feet of fence and he wants to make a rectangle and he wants to maximize the area, okay? So here, look at the information we have. We have the perimeter, 
So that's 2x plus 2w, that's equal to 2,000 feet of fencing. And you know the area, you know that it's x times w. And you want to maximize that. To do that, let's go ahead and solve for w. Okay, so let's get w by itself here. So let's do 2w equals 2,000 minus 2x. Did you see how I did that? I just moved the 2x over. Divide by 2. Divide by 2. And we know that w is equal to 1,000 minus x. I'm going to go ahead and put that perimeter into my area now. So I know that the area is equal to x times, it's not w anymore, you know what it is, it's 1000 minus x. If I distribute this, I get, and I'm going to put this first, uh, minus x squared plus 1000x. And notice I did that, so I can get a my x squared first, so I know that this is my a, this is my b, and there's no c. So right now a is, lowercase a, a is negative 1, b is 1000, and c is 0. Notice that your area is now in a quadratic function, and notice that your a is negative. If you were to graph this, you know that it's going to be opening down, and here is your maximum. This lets you know that the area of this rectangle will keep increasing, increasing, increasing until it reaches the vertex, until it reaches its maximum, and then begin to decrease as you change the dimensions. So you want to find out what this is. That's where what we just did comes into play. All right, let's go ahead and find out the vertex then. Let's do negative b over 2a. That is negative 1,000 over 2 times negative 1. So it's negative 1,000 over negative 2. It's just 500. Now, you have a choice. You can find out the w by putting it into our perimeter, or you can put it into our modified area. Okay? Whichever one you choose is up to you. I'm just going to go ahead and do this one, because the question is, what is the maximum area? not what is what are the dimensions okay so read your question carefully in this case i'm just going to use this if they ask you for the dimensions you need to use that perimeter so you know how much your width is i'm going to go ahead and use this one for my area so that's negative x squared actually i know what my x is it's 500 squared plus 1000 times 500. That negative is outside the parentheses, so I get negative 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, negative 250,000 plus 500,000. Take care of this, and I get 2,500. That is the maximum area that he can do with the materials he has. And that's a very classic problem. Uh, that you'll most likely have. Alright, that's it for today. Thank you for joining us. Until next time.